SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, one of the owners of EWR Digital. And my name is Matt Bertram. I'm your SEO strategist. And and crypto, I'm I'm you're kind of my enthusiast. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's that's a that's you know, I like guru. I, I think it's fairly applicable. Um, but enthusiasts, you know, I, yeah. I I do have a I do have a call uh like next week with this guy from Ripple. So Okay. Yeah, he's like a programmer. Yeah, someone hooked me up with him. But yeah, that's a different that's a different story. That's different very story. cool. We are Matt and I are broadcasting live from Houston, Texas. And do remember, Matt and I are your results. Results. Uh, if you recall, last podcast, actually podcast number 407, was cryptocurrency marketing part one. This is you're not going to be surprised. There's no cryptocurrency challenge here. Uh, it's cryptocurrency marketing part two. Last time, yes, Matt. So I want to I want to take a step back and and I, you know you and I like have had some dialogue, but I I want to talk about this. Like so, we're you know we're the mark. What is it? Marketing rebels, right? Results you know? rebels. Results rebels, right? Now you know when we rebranded, right? And as as you know we're like KFC, you know eWeb Results is now EWR Digital. Yep. Um, and you can see the logo there right behind you. We're, you know, falling in line with that that theme. We're a little outside the box, but focused on results. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so um, last one about cryptocurrency. We'll talk about that here in a second. But before we get to it, I wanted to share this review. Uh, it's from the title's Internet Director. I've been a listener for a long time. Started subscribing around podcast number 110. Wow. Uh, I have downloaded and listened to all of them. They have always provided current and relevant information on how to better your digital marketing. The potatoes are great and the meat is always edutaining. Uh, these guys are willing to answer questions and provide advice. Round one, knockout, patif. This is from Kayak Pow. Patif to you, we really appreciate you taking the time leaving that. Um, you know he's a, a longtime listener when he's uh, talking about meat and potatoes. We haven't mentioned that in, yeah. in a minute. Yeah, well, we're talking about the potatoes and we're going to get into the meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, do, let's do the meat now. All right, let's do it. So uh, just a quick recap of last time, right? So we really, the concept is a, a, a new Bitcoin, a new cryptocurrency, not a new Bitcoin, a new cryptocurrency is coming out. Uh, it's EWR coins. Matt and I decided, hey, we should do this. Uh, this is facetious, by the way. This is the kind of the premise. Um, and we're interested in a marketing strategy. And we've actually come to ourselves for that marketing strategy. <laughs> and last time we talked about like these things, the things that you would need in a marketing strategy. Yeah. Web design, videos, SEO, paid promotion, press releases, display campaigns, and then remarketing. So if you're interested in those, you want to understand those, go back and check podcast number 507. You know, so so Chris, not to go into it too much, but um, basically uh, there was a rebrand that recently happened. Uh, there's a coin called Matic and it's rebranding Polygon, I believe. And, um, you know, this is just a sign of how important marketing is. So they, they rebranded, um, they redid the website, they, you know, repositioned themselves and the coin has, has shot up dramatically, you know? And so um, that has a lot to do with positioning and marketing. Um, and, and they felt it was so important that they changed the name uh, of their company to more reflect uh, what they're trying to achieve in the marketplace. So, um, you know, we're, you know, I mean, and, and it's so powerful because I think the coins, you know, I don't know how many multiples it's gone up, but it's been it's been significant. So, yeah. Yeah. So the whole kind of perception people have of your business, also known as marketing, um, is is and marketing can even go d d deeper than just the perception they have. It can go all the way through the experience that they have with your business. And that, and that, I was reading an article on it and they were talking about um you know, how much uh, more friendly the website was from a usability standpoint and how they felt that was important, you know? And so, again, it goes back to like, what's what's the core, right? The core is a, a solid um, piece of property 
online, just like that's what you know digital you know currency is or Bitcoin. Like it, is you you own a little piece. Um, there's even these you know domain names that are coming out um, that that people are camping on. Um, but you know who knows what's going to happen in the future. But you're owning a little piece of the internet, right? Like ewrdigital.com, bestofseopodcast.com. Like we own that little piece of real estate on the internet and that you know and when people come there they're 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 looking at your brand with a reflection of uh how you should be viewed right and i think right now even if we you know pu pull it back away from digital currencies um right now with the pandemic um there's a lot of discongruity i don't that's not a word <laughs> incongruity. incongruity um between uh people's offices right and then maybe their showroom online or their website and and people are starting to look at their website a lot more critically and realize hey we need to get this up to date and that's really one of the trends uh that we're seeing right now is a lot of people reinvesting in their digital presence um and that's where it all starts so and and, and we say like the your website should express the value and quality of service or product you provide to your customers, so like they need to match. There, it does need to have that congruity, uh, congruence. Um, all right. So the last thing we talked about last time was remarketing, and remarketing is so very important. We thought that we would kind of reiterate how valuable remarketing is. Matt, how valuable is remarketing? It's probably the most important thing you can do after a good website and SEO, right? Like that's, that's, I mean, remarketing is someone comes to your website and then, um, you know, 94% of the time they leave and they never come back and you have the ability to, um, get in front of them again, uh, and target those, they call it window shoppers with, with retargeting, remarketing, bring them back, tell them a story, uh, you know, for, for a full period of time, even, you know, the, the interesting thing that I'm seeing is, you know, Pixels, everybody's concerned about pixels and, you know, what, what's happening there. Well, a lot of this new marketing is uh, targeting the IP of the phone, right? It's, it's, it's actually targeting the phone. And so if pixels go away, it doesn't really matter. Like, like if you have an app on your phone, they got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, I mean, do you open up the weather app? They got you and they got your location. Like, so, you know, um, I think re retargeting is a technology that the companies that are leveraging it um, are, are seeing uh, tons of success. And, and there's so many companies that aren't leveraging it that, you know, are doing okay because, you know, they're in the internet marketing space and, and they're, you know, new customers are finding them, but, you know, it's really all about once you get the traffic, you know, getting more juice out of the lemon, right? I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but, yeah. you know, get, get, get more juice out of the lemon and remarketing helps you do that. And I, I really can't emphasize it enough. Uh, there's a lot of studies, there's a lot of data out there that supports it. And there's a lot of different ways you can do remarketing, Chris. Yeah. Like you can do streaming video. You can do, you know, any any platform that has a pixel, any sh social media platform that has a pixel. You have you can do text messages, you can do emails. Like there's 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 so much um, in 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 the context of retargeting, remarketing. Um, that you can utilize. So there, there's even strategies where uh, just because they visited your website, you can at about 30 to 50 percent uh, accuracy identify their email address and start dripping them. Yep. Uh, you know, sending them an email drip campaign. By the way, email campaigns is the last thing we'll be talking about oh. today because <laughs> it is also incredibly important and important and has an incredible ROI. So in summary, right? Website, SEO, make sure you're placed well because that supports so many other things that you might consider doing. And then remarketing, probably the single best use of your marketing dollars. Pay um, dollars. The best use of your pay dollars by far. I would yeah. say I would say that handsome. 100%, 100%. So that's awesome. Remarketing. All right. So let's talk about next. And we're going to throw in a couple of components here. Direct messaging, right? So one of the things we're talking about, ER, EWR coins, 
there's going to be an app, right? There's going to, the app's going to be on a phone. We're going to probably at some point have access to their phone number. Uh, because there's an app, we've got push notifications. So that can be direct no notifications. We'll also have SMS notifications. So talk a little bit about kind of s like social chat, website chat, SMS, SMS chat, like chaka, ch just chat with us, Matt. <laughs> um, you, you know, the, the chat function on a website produces more leads. It, it, it creates less friction of, um, of someone interacting with you um, at, a, at a very kind of low, low entry point. Hey, you have a question. Hey, you know, like I would rather text somebody than call them on the phone. Um, but I think it's incredibly important to talk about social when you're talking about uh, in the cryptocurrency space specifically, because really, um, you know, we, we actually have a crypto client right now that we're having a lot of trouble getting ads approved. OK, and so that knocks out Facebook, that knocks out um, AdWords. We did get approved on Quora, you know, crazy, um, you know, but the, the reality is we're, we're looking at alternative routes on the paid side, but those are the two big buckets. And so really you have SEO. Right. And SEO, I mean, should be part of every strategy. You got SEO and then you got influencer and social media marketing. Right. And like that's it, because all the paid marketing just knocked out. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to be social um, and you got to figure out how to best communicate uh, with your audience and develop your community. And, um, you know, be, being being active on social. Um, you know, I, I'll give you an example, like Twitter is basically like your, your company's like mini press releases, right? Um, and so uh, it's what's going on, what you want to say publicly. Uh, it's really how you're using all the different uh, social media, social media platforms in the, the, I don't know, the, the, I'm not, I want to say crypto world, but, but like social media sphere, I, I like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Everything has a different like use case, right? And it really depends. It's hard to say blanketly do this, but yeah, I would put a chat bot on your site. Like yeah. I would, I, I would, I would recommend it, it. You know, it costs a little bit of money, but if if you're trying to drive leads and get engagement, um, it certainly helps. It's it's equivalent to like if you have a bunch of forms uh, and you're trying to capture people's information. Reducing the forms reduces the friction. Yeah. Um, it's it's been crazy. Like if you have first name, last name, and then you just say name, right? Or if you're asking for uh, email address and, um, you know, phone number, first and you name. reduce it down to like name, email address, it's crazy how much, um, you, you know, your your uh, lead rate goes up. And yeah, I, I know that, at one point they thought it was a 10% drop for every field. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what the data says about 10% drop for every field. Yep. Here's another data point. So I just kind of pulled this up real quick. Um, it's a, it's an article on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot. It says marketing experts say that implementing live chat support generates a 305% return on investment and a 20% increase in conversion rates. Yeah. So, so, okay. So you bundle that, right. And you know, really what you're looking for once you get to the first page of Google and you get in traffic is, how do you continue to optimize, right? And if you're talking data point of retargeting, remarketing, 400% increase in engagement, right? So now you're retargeting them and then you're adding a chat bot to your site. Like, you know, these are not small, like 3% increases, but a 3%, a 5%, you know, if you're doing CRO on a site uh, or conversion rate optimization, like you're, you're making these small improvements. These are massive improvements, right? Yeah. And these are what we would call like low hanging fruit that you would want to do first, right? Um, uh, one of the big things too that that I think it, it wouldn't hurt to mention is um, something like call rail, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so depending on the size of your organization, uh, if you have uh, salespeople or people answering the phone, being able to record that, um, it's also helpful for us to, to see kind of full circle the leads that are starting to come in to maybe redirect the keywords. Um, you know, for, for example, um, you know, if you're selling office furniture uh, and, and you, you know, you want to sell modern office furniture, but modern furniture is actually modern home furniture. So you start generating those leads, then you got to like kind of transition it to something else. And so understanding that full circle 
is incredibly important. And then also knowing what the rest of your organization is saying. I think that that's one of the things I love about digital marketing so much is, is all the data and, and, you know, all, all the, all the different ways that you can track with analytics and find out um, what's going on. And, And these data points, how do you get to these data points? Like when you're just talking about marketing or a billboard or a radio or some kind of traditional marketing, you have actual data points that you can point to to say how much that this has increased, why, maybe what keyword it was, what time of day. Um, there's all kinds of demographics that you can pull from this, as well as even understand the audience better. And, um, and, and so, you know, I think it's incredibly important to, to consider these things. Uh, and, and again, I would say that a lot of these things, Chris, um, even when we get into email marketing, people are not doing, even though that it's oh, so, yeah. like the data is so strong, people are still not doing it. And, you know, it, it's almost like, okay, so it's almost like, you know, pulling it back to cryptos is people think it's too late. You know what I mean? It's too late. Like Chris Burris, it's too late. Um, but it's not, not the EWR it's, coin. It's, it's not. It's not because. No, like there's so many, few people doing it, right? There's so few people doing it. Like even in crypto space, there's about a hundred million. Here, 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 here's something for Chris. So there's a hundred million users, right? About uh, when the first internet IPO went public, okay? There's about a hundred million wallets right now, okay? And then Coinbase is about to go public, right? And Coinbase is those guys. I know, I don't know those guys, but I know a guy that, was in one of the guy's weddings and he got an offer to go work for Coinbase like five years ago and he didn't take it. He stayed at IBM and he's like kicking himself. Right. Um, so I actually don't know those guys, but they, they, they started here at Rice here in Houston, Texas. Um, but, but that's, that's where we are in, in the, in the sphere of things. Like so. email marketing, like not everyone's doing it. And there's a lot not of everybody's doing it. chatbot. Not everybody's doing remarketing almost like, so no many people are not doing it if you're talking about um you know local businesses so these are three big things that um that that again you go back to um what are the fundamentals what are the what are the key things to really move the needle um these are absolutely three of them and and we do talk about these things with our clients not all our clients are doing them. the clients that are doing them are really happy about it right um but but again it, it's additional costs it's additional work but but it's worth it if it's producing a good ROI for you. So yes, absolutely. All right. So re, reiterated remarketing. Talked a little bit about direct messaging again, like social chat, website chat, um, social uh, SMS chat. Uh, let's talk a little bit about influencers and and what kind of you know like what are the implications of influencer marketing? So and I know. Okay, I, I you, might, yeah, you go. Yeah, I might be in a better position to 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 really help this because um for for a, a business that I own, my vital C, uh, I really turn to influencer marketing to like okay, it's an edge, it's an edge. It goes back to these kind of education plays. Like, where do you need to expose your product to an audience? Because my particular product, people don't know that they need it, don't necessarily know that they even want it, and so you've got to spend some time educating. So I've been spending a lot of time on podcasts. Um, which I don't know that we have listed. We'll we'll have to fold that into our kind of marketing strategy here because it's a it's a phenomenal way to educate yeah. people. If you look at you know the population of the U.S. and the fact there's only 100 million wallets, um, there's a lot of growth opportunity, and getting on podcasts could help do that. So influencer marketing, I really actually found this tool called uh, Intellifluence. The platform is is very well put together, and what it does is you can post a project, and and they can. Uh, there are a bunch of influencers out there, so you can search them. and Are they health related? Uh, are they in the U.S.? Uh, do how much product do they expect you to send them? Right? How much do they expect to get paid? And a lot of them don't require anything. Um, and then they'll put together whatever it is that you want. Maybe it's a post, uh, an Instagram post. Maybe it's a video, whatever. Um, and then that comes out. Now, one of the things that I'll share is like influencer marketing takes some some budget for sure and takes some time to manage. So there may be agencies that really focus on that. Um, I would be very diligent about uh, uh, what what you expect from any organization that you hire to help you with in influencer marketing. 
because mostly what I've found so far is that a lot of people don't have much of an audience and have even less influence over well, that audience. Well, so, so, I mean, there's a couple things to consider here and then I can even bring it back to crypto, but you know, these influencers are there, for how engaged you need to look at engagement, right? Yep. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. You could have a bunch of bots following you, right? You know what I mean? Or you could have a bunch of people that are not in your target niche or in your target geograph, uh, geography, yep. right? And so um, I really look at like engagement is, is, is really important because I think that there's a, a lot of um, stuff going on out there that's not good. Also in the crypto space, uh, specifically like John McAfee, um, you know, the guy invented, you know, McAfee um, yep. antivirus. He's getting in trouble right now because he was he was pushing stuff, I guess, from prison and, um, you know, was getting, uh, you know, was there was some concern that he was influencing prices. And then also Tron is another coin out there that a lot of celebrities are getting behind. And there's some, uh, you know, there, there, there's some talk that. Uh, these these celebrities are getting paid to push it, right? And so um, you, you got to figure out where the line is for you and like what what makes sense. Um, I think it's it's really best to try to um, you know the more influencers you can convert right to believers is really the key because then they're going to be promoting it because they believe in it, right? Yeah. And, and uh, versus um, promoting it because you pay them to promote it. I think people can kind of uh, read through uh, a lot of that. And so um, I don't think anything's changed either, right? So like people used to always pay celebrities to promote stuff, right? Oh. That, that, that's always gone there. There's always, always products, product placement. There's all, all that. What's happened is just, you know, there's people that have become like internet stars on YouTube or gaming or whatever it is. Um, that that now this market reaches, right? So it's expanded this market. But if you can find and then even connect with through social media or Twitter or whatever, where you um, you know develop a relationship with uh, the, these influencers, they could be quite powerful. I mean, that's what you pay for uh, PR so like organizations is you pay for their relationships with these people to really take a look at the product to see if it's something that aligns with what they believe in. And those are the real connections. And so there, there is a certainly a quick way to do it. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that will like write on their forehead, like whatever you want for money um, or other places. And, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know you, you, there, like, again, there's like a lot of like, like, where, where are you on the bell curve? Like, what are you looking for? How do you utilize it? I know some different coins will pay people in coins, you know, and that's, yeah. you know, there's some, um, you know, there's, that's debatable too, of paying people in coins to help you promote with PR, right? So there's, um, there's, I think there's a group called the Link Marines that promote a, a, a coin called Chainlink, like, and, and that's, is starting to be more of a budget for coins that I've seen is where some of the coins going. A lot of the coins are going from promotion. So there's a lot of great coins out there that maybe haven't had all the hyper promotion budget that, you know, if no one knows about it, right. You, you know, that's the first, what, what does that saying go? Like, you know, if you have a good, if you have a bad product and you do marketing, it's just how quickly people are going to see how bad of a product you have. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, once you have developed a good product, you, you really need uh, to have good marketing. Even there's some concepts out there uh, and beliefs. I think it's like the content Institute. I, I read a, a few books by this guy. Um, he believes build an audience first or be active in the community first. And then when you have a product, you can easily distribute it. And um, you know, that like we were talking, we were talking yeah. if we were going to talk about Reddit or not, like you can't just go spam on Reddit. Like you need to be part of the community and be genuine about what you're sharing. And so, you know, while you're developing your product, you should be, you, you should be building relationships. I mean, I think, Ultimately, this is all about connections. This is all about relationships, um, you know, game theory, all that. And so uh, you should always be social. You should always yeah. be developing relationships, connecting with people, following up with people, keeping that, that, that 
that link with them, right? Um, that's that's what the, the email follow-ups, the text message follow-ups, posting on social media is to keep that connection, so. Yeah, it, and, and really our kind of next item is uh, is social communities and we'll lump podcasts into that, like getting out there and being in the environment. And really this can, a lot of this can go back to your book, right? Uh, uh, Build Your Brand Mania, where it's about identifying how do you create yourself as the expert in this environment, whatever that environment is. And you can do that through podcasts. You can do that through, you know, being a contributor on Reddit. You can do that through uh, all sorts of well, Quora as a great example, like providing answers on Quora, getting quality videos out there, having quality content out there. All of those things um, will, will help you grow your brand and expand the EWR coin uh, through social communities and uh, and podcasts. Well, you know, I, I appreciate, um, <laughs> the, the, the little promotion of the, the, the book there, you know, um, the little plug, uh, I can tell you that that book has started to penetrate, um, some pretty influential people have, have found that book and read it and have messaged me. There's somebody that you even recently connect me with. That's pretty dang influential. Yes. Uh, in, in the political space, like, you know, um, a, a lot of realtors um, in the Houston area, I just, I was a, a guest on a, 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 a I, I hosted a podcast for somebody that did this big event at the Houston club downtown for realtors. And a lot of people had come up and said that they had actually uh, read the book and it's helped them in, in that area. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you that uh, in the new economy, that that really you got to get your voice heard you got to get out there and again people are going to do business with people they know like and trust so like the thing is like whoever you are like you're gonna you're gonna uh you're you're gonna you're gonna connect with certain people and you're gonna push other people away and i think that that's really okay i, I yeah. think really you, you shouldn't um, be trying to market to everybody and also if there's somebody that that you don't connect with or you don't like or doesn't believe like you know, and there's a lot of polarization, so you got to be careful there. But, um, you know, you're going to you're going to do business with people that you like, you know what I mean? Like and so um, you, you shouldn't cater. I, I don't believe you should cater to anybody because it's going to be just really lukewarm of the engagement. You need to uh, find uh, whoever you connect with most and then draw more people like that to you. I think that that's the beauty in, in the community online. Um, you can connect with people that have similar beliefs uh, and they don't have to be in your geographic area. And now, especially with like COVID, um, you know, people are in community, online communities a lot more and they're finding people with like minded interests, like, and, and there's no geographical barrier yep. to connecting with those people. Um, that's one of the things too about digital marketing, right? It, 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 there's no barriers to it. There, there's no barriers to, cryptocurrencies like as well right so um you know so i think that uh we're in an interconnected world and and uh connecting with people and being social is incredibly important so. yep all right so next we created this whole category it could go into reputation management on its own uh as part of reputation management but really testimonials right so that's one of the things that you want to be driving from whatever, like whatever the product is, if we're looking at EWR coins, whatever, like the, the, the mantra behind EWR coins, you want to get people out there providing testimonials about how easy it is to use, about how you like the mission, uh, about how they connect with it and enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you know, getting people to be vocal on social media about it is important. I think it's more about the storytelling of, of what you're doing. I think you're speaking to maybe if you're a wallet like or something like that in the space, or um, there's a lot of different services, service industries that are coming into it, um, you know, where you can actually go leave reviews on like the company, right? Versus maybe, maybe the coin. I think it's really about what the coin does. Is it efficient? Mission. Is there security to it? Um, you know, having people talk about it and providing education or education marketing, I think is incredibly important to getting that message out there, telling like, what is that problem? 
uh, out there that your coin solves. Um, but also, like you were talking about, if there's anything that's servicing those coins or that industry or companies, um, you know, uh, people's interactions uh, with you there are incredibly important. Like if you're an exchange or, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different, uh, I mean, there is actually, we were talking about it this morning, actually, there's a, a organization I listened to. He was on a podcast, right? Uh, and it's only about 10 people and, you know, they can, I guess, work with companies to pay uh, a certain percentage and, and, and all of it in my head, it's not that hard to like set that up. Right. But to be able to give that to somebody to manage it for you is, is really quite nice. Um, but, but and, and, and just, it wasn't clear. So, and that's a situation where like, maybe you've got employees on salary and you give them the option to they, put, they want to pay, uh, yeah, yeah. they want to pay. For, yeah. Sorry. I didn't finish the full thought, but if someone wants to get paid in Bitcoin or another coin, um, you know, a certain allocation, each paycheck, like a savings rate, we were looking at like setting up potentially like a 401k or something in cryptocurrency. Yep. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different like use cases. And if you're that company, you need to have reviews for people to trust you that it's working effectively. It's smooth. Um, there's great customer service. There's good security. Like all those things are incredibly important. Um, uh, in in this this new world, this new age. So, absolutely, and testimonies are great. Now, now, what is the most powerful testimonial that you can find? Video, without a doubt. <laughs> and uh, what would be the best way to collect, Matt? And what would be the best way to collect a video testimonial? Chris, you're so good at. <laughs> there, yeah. Hopefully, uh, no one feels what's happening underneath. <laughs> well, you, you know, so so when COVID hit. Right. Um, you know, we, we started a videography service about two and a half years ago uh, for anybody out there that uh, doesn't know. Just uh, we started videography service. Uh, we, we saw it as a benefit to SEO. We saw, you know, uh, even on the testimonial side or the about us side, like, hey, let's let's tell the story. Um, long form content's doing well. Um, there's more engagement on the testimonials. A video testimonial is better than like someone's name in a description. Like you want, you want that trust, you want that credibility. And then when COVID hit, it was like, nobody wanted you to come anywhere. Everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. And so we kind of pulled off the shelf, uh, some software, uh, and, and finished it. Right. And so basically, um, it, it's a video testimonial service that, that pro testimonial it's pro testimonial.com. It's up and running. And, uh, a friend of ours, uh, had been working on it for a couple of years and finally, you know, it, it's really working quite well. And, and so, so we put that out there and there's so many, uh, we're getting so much great feedback. It's easy to send a link or an email to somebody. It, it goes, give me access to your camera. Boom, boom, boom. Like counts down. It you doesn't can ask need a an question. app. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, and then boom, you can grab a testimony, you can put it on your website, you can put music to it. You can, you know, add some, uh, you know, effects to it. Uh, but I mean, like use case wise, like testimonials, um, you can send birthday messages with it. That's one of the things we're starting to see people use it for. Realtors are using it a lot to like do different scenes and show show off houses. But but really, it's just um, ease of use, right? Like yeah. it's not to say that somebody uh, can't you know record on their phone and send you a message. Like it's not to say that. It's just they click on the link and then boom, it just uh, step by step holds your hand, walks you through it, does the whole thing, sends it. And, and I feel like that's like half the battle, you know yeah. what I mean, is is just, OK, what are the steps? I don't want to have to think through it and and you can send it to people and and get that done. But I think that um, hearing like people. So so we're, we're picking up another national account and, um, you know, they're like, hey, we want references. Right. They're like, we want references like no problem. Uh, here's like eight video testimonials. They're all still our current clients. Uh, you can watch them. And if you want to talk to him, let us know. But I mean, th like, what's better than someone's getting in front of a camera and giving you a testimonial by their name, their company, who they are on camera, like, that's trusted, right? Yeah. Like, that is absolute trust. It's not like, you know, first name, last initial, no company, like, stock image or no image and text, like, 
you know, the, the more transparent you can be, uh, the better. And, uh, you know, there's a lot in even body language that, that people need to see and pick up. Right. And so I think a video testimonial is, you know, absolutely the apex of the, the kind of review you could get. So, and, and that's pro testimonial.com, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Very cool. Uh, actually, I see that John Perone is is connected on Facebook. So, uh, patif to you, John, for for connecting. Um, and I'm going to ask you, that's Bitwallet.org, everybody. That's uh, one of our crypto clients. <laughs> I'm going to throw this in, um, which is, you know, somebody asked you for EWR testimonials, and you're like, hey, here's videos, and I'll put you in contact with any one of these. I've actually gotten proposals for like Amazon marketing, kind of some some of the stuff that EWR just doesn't do uh, and really isn't on our radar to do in the future. And there are two incidences that I can think of where they're like, oh, we don't do testimonials. Like we we don't do referrals. Like we're not going to put you in contact with a customer. And in my yeah, head- Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. They're like, we, 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 we're not, we got to ask them. We're not allowed to do it. Like, what do you think of that, Chris? Well, I think- um, I think if you don't have raving fans that are willing to get on the phone with a potential future customer, provided it's not a competitor, <laughs> then what quality of service do you really have? And I can tell you one of them, I engaged them anyway, I liked them, they did a good job. I'm no longer with them because they didn't knock my socks off. They certainly did, like it was worth the money I spent but I moved on to another company that actually did a much better job. And so I think that boils down, would I give them, I would give them a good testimonial. I would even be able to get on the phone, but you probably don't want me on the phone because like I moved on after them. Well, you know, yeah. So, so then it's like, why did you move on? I, I, here's what I could tell you. Like if we're talking about um, in the crypto space, there's a lot of money floating around here. Okay. Um, a lot of these big companies, are just horrible. Okay. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to be flat out. Like we picked up a lot of clients from some really big brand names and it's all about like even um, why people like you used to trust. I, I'm reading this book actually. It's called uh, I think it's called discovering blockchain or something like that, or uh, mastering blockchain. It's the first like textbook out there that I, that I got. And I'm just like reading through it. And it talks about how people used to trust in brands, right? Hey, our bank's been around a hundred years. You should trust us. Hey, we're a big name, right? Uh, and and it's like people are selling the brand, and you're doing business with Visa or Mastercard. Or like you're trusting the brand, and really the shift in, in, in the blockchain is you're you're trusting math, right? You're trusting right. data, right? And I think that that can even be applied here. That there's a lot of these big names, and I think we're all kind of entrenched in this thinking that, oh man, like there's such a big name that they got to know what they're doing. And like, I can't tell you how many clients we picked up where like, they're like, can you t-, like, even like a year later, okay, tell us what their real strategy was. And I was like, they didn't have one. Like yeah. they, they were just, they like, I mean, the mar- the margins are so big. They're just taking your money. Like they weren't doing a good job. It's very hard to build processes like we have at scale, right? And they yep. maybe scaled too fast or maybe they didn't develop them or maybe they just outsourced it to, you know, some other country or something like that. But I can tell you right now that um, just because a company has a big brand name does not mean they're doing good by you. The data, yep. the data is what proves the results and the people that are getting on the phone uh, or sorry, on the on the video for us, it's because we've proved it to them, right? Yeah. It's not because uh, you know that like, we, yeah. like they become our friends and all that because we 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 have a, a really long client retention. Um, but 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 the reason they did it is because we delivered results through them through data, and that's really what you want. And and again, these big companies should be able to provide references. I mean, I see some of that. But, you know, like, I, I think that they're, they're able to hide behind some of that as well, yeah. um, in my opinion. So I think that there's, there's some, some truth in it, but I, I think more than anything else, there's a lot of big companies that aren't doing a good job 
and don't really have references they can provide. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, and I, and that's not all of them, but that, that's certainly some that I've personally uh, picked up clients from. So I can say that I'm not just kind of flooding, you know, what's going on out there, but, but there, there, it is happening as well. So. All right. Let's kind of quickly cover the last three points. Um, so this is really reputation management. That's one of the things that you want to be managing that you want to have a handle on. And frankly, testimonials, not just video testimonials. Obviously, those are good, but testimonials in general are pretty good for this. You think about at some point, somebody's going to be upset with your with your brand, whatever, with the, you know, with the EWR coin for whatever reason. Sure. Right. It may be whatever Chris's hairstyle that day was off. And so now I'm upset with the EWR brand that kind of the EWR coins um, that will happen. And if you have, I don't know, a hundred reviews, positive reviews, then the one bad review just looks like, you know, a cranky person as opposed to somebody uh, who actually has a legitimate complaint. And what's the data point on like people that are that if you deliver bad service, the amount of people they'll tell versus the amount of people that will to do it like if you do something good like it's i, I always say it's nine to one okay. i i can't tell you where i got that number and what that means is if people you are nine times more likely to get a negative review than you are to get a positive review right because like the negative builds up an enough emotion to drive action and it's really hard to create so much positivity to drive enough emotion to drive action Right. So so yeah. that's like that's the number that I use. Again, I don't have a reference for that, but I think everyone has a sense that 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 makes sense. You're we're more inclined um, to complain to the manager at a restaurant over something. Uh, I don't know, whatever in the food or bad service than we are to ask the manager to come out and say our meal was really good. Well, well yeah, I think that. You know, it's so you have to have so many positive interactions to every negative interaction, and people expect to have a positive experience, and so it's almost expected that that's what you deliver. And if you don't deliver that, that's when people get upset, and that's yeah. when people talk about it. But but there's there's a lot of silence in like you know people that are getting the level of service that they want. So if you can get those people to leave you and have reviews and have those raving fans, then um, that really says something about your yeah. product or your service or um, your coin or whatever it is you're doing. So yeah, the project, you know, so. Okay, so reputation management, good. Um, and we've certainly helped some people with their reputations online in the past. Um, yeah. Next, and you got into this quite, quite a bit, so we can just touch on it again. Uh, and I added this last minute, um, just, collecting and using data, be data driven. So marketing data. So part of the marketing plan, I love the phrase, a lot of people are familiar with um, test and measure. And I like the concept of measure and test. Don't even do it, right? Although there's that is it's counter to another kind of concept that I have, which is ready, fire, aim instead of ready, aim, fire. But okay. know how you're gonna test it. Know how you're gonna measure it as you're even as you're going out and starting to do it because at the end of the day i mean we everybody at ewr is like really passionate about helping our customers and we can get on the phone and have disagreements about like what is the best way to ha help that customer and we'll defend those points really strongly until the data comes in and then we're like oh that's the right way and you go that way well i mean yeah i think that um you know, A-B testing is incredibly important. Heat mapping is incredibly important. Um, and and really, like, we like to, uh, you know, early on put put heat mapping on there, uh, you know, record the sessions of what's happening, and then uh, collect that data for a while. And, it, you know, it's almost kind of like do no harm first, or let's see kind of what, what's going on right now, and let's collect that data. And then let's then let's make some assumptions based on that data and best practices that we know. And then we'll A-B test that um, to, to improve uh, the conversion rate. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, that's closing the loop, right? Like it's not just, you know, throwing marketing to see if spaghetti hits the wall. It's right. really uh, having, a, you know, a, a recommended or a, you know, an outlined approach to or methodology of, of what you're trying to achieve and how. 
And some sort of, you have some sort of measuring device to in to understand how much spaghetti hit the wall and how much. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and to wrap this up, email marketing, right? So uh, there's a I'm I'm you know we've worked with people who are like they've closed and there's no email follow up, right? There's no what's the what's the next step? They maybe made a purchase. And are you kind of sending out emails that build up one, of course, send out, hey, thanks for the purchase. We appreciate you. And then what are the drips? If it's a product that you're shipping, what are the drips that are going out to them as they're waiting to help build up that anticipation about receiving the product? Or if it's a service, what are those drips like of, of the testimonial videos that you've connect, collected by using pro testimonial really easily? Um, those testimonial videos that go out and say, hey, great, you signed up for this service. Um, it starts in 10 days because there's some sort of lag time. Hey, just you know, dig into these testimonials so that when you start interacting with us, you already have the expectation of great results. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, look, nurture campaigns are incredibly important. Um, you know, even lead scoring, right? Based on how how much in, how engaged they are, maybe what they downloaded, have they given your email, have they downloaded this thing, have they, you know, set up this? Like, you can, you can do kind of lead scoring. Also, just like with remarketing, based on certain pages or downloadables, you can put them in a different bucket, right? And then you can have uh, targeted campaigns uh, to them. Right. And then also one of the good rules of thumb is uh, how often should you be sending emails? Right. So this is like a big question. How I don't want to bother people. They get a lot of emails like there's a lot of different viewpoints on it. My personal viewpoint on it is this. Uh, how how do you want to interact with that customer? Uh, are you uh, you know, do you want to be family with them? Right. So maybe it's talking to them every day or every other day or, you know, whatever, a close friend every week. Or, um, you know, every couple of weeks or every month, like depend on how like what that relationship is that that you have with other people and how close you want to be to that client. And then and then that's kind of where you go. Is it a acquaintance quarterly? They might even forget who you are. Right. I think really it's once a month or even up to once a day. And what's interesting is actually the data showed me the more emails you send, the okay, better. Uh, the more engagement you have and the, the, the higher conversion rate you have. And people just don't want to bother people. But if you're delivering value and you're delivering good content and they want whatever it is you have, they appreciate those, right? Yeah. And typically, if they don't want them, they'll just opt out, right? Yeah. And for the people that do want them, you want to connect with them as much as possible or as much as you feel comfortable with to um, communicate whatever it is you want to communicate, right? And I think that people keep email addresses on average eight years or something like that. I, and then that data might have be a little old. So as long as someone typically lives in a house, they, they, they have the same, you know, email real estate, uh, a little interesting piece of data, how before Bitcoin came out, um, the, what cryptocurrency was looking at doing in the beginning was uh, attaching some type of cost or value to each email that was being sent because spam was getting out of control right. Right. and they were going to start charging people like a stamp, you know, to send, to send emails because then people wouldn't just, you know, for free, spam you, spam yeah. everybody. Right. And that, that was actually, uh, you know, what, what one of the use cases was early on before the whole idea of Bitcoin came together. And, and yeah, and and uh, digital currency, crypt, crypt, yep. crypt, cryptography. Um, all right, and and again, just to rehash, there are ways that you can take a visitor to your website, understand their email address, not a hundred percent, and start emailing them as a follow up. So you've got your remarketing campaign running, you've got your email email remarketing campaign also running. So those are really powerful tools. Um, mm -hmm. So that's our that's our marketing plan. I feel like I feel like streaming, we have pretty good I, I mean we didn't talk about streaming networks, but but uh, we can, like we're already way over on time here. This has been a uh, you know a what a, what is this has been a I don't know what the right word is, but but this crypto is important, and yeah. so uh, and it's going to be more important. So you know, hour and a half, two hours talking about this, I think um, is, is long overdue. Uh, but but uh, OTT networks, um, 
you know, uh, streaming, uh, you know, internet radio. There, there's a lot of opportunities out there, and and maybe we can do another podcast about the that in particular specifically. Um, but but I think that there's a lot of opportunity there, and there's not as many rules because it's not used as much, uh, like say Facebook and uh, Google. I I just feel like they're starting to gatekeep all kinds of stuff, and um, uh, that 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 that's why I think decentralization is great. So um, you can get that message out there. So very cool. Well, so now if you're coming out with a digital currency, you've got the marketing plan and know who you should be working with uh, for making that happen. And certainly uh, John Perone agrees with uh, with that because he's working with us. Um, all right. Well, that that wraps up the podcast. Uh, if you guys enjoy our podcast, if you connect with our podcast and find information in the podcast useful, one, we are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click that little bell so that you get notifications of when the podcasts come out. Um, we would ask that you leave us a review. Uh, you could do that on iTunes. That would be awesome. Hopefully, you could make that review. Five stars. Uh, I feel like we're doing that together. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it. We'll have to go back and listen. No, I think it. I think it's perfect. All right. So um, we really appreciate you guys, all of our listeners out there. Uh, you have made us the most popular SEO podcast, the one of the most popular internet marketing podcasts. That is because of all y'all. We appreciate you. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. My name is Matt Berkshire. Bye-bye for now. Bye.